We will be starting our webinar in a few minutes time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, July 22 to 2020. And with on behalf of the faculty engagement committee, I would like to welcome everyone today's to, to today's webinar. Our host for today is the Training and Development Officer of DLSUD, Dr. Roel Paras. Sir Roel. Uh, thank you, Ms. Judith. Um, good morning, everyone. A blessed day to all. Um, today, uh, we hope everyone is doing well. We will be having our online engagement and we have five resource speakers. We'll be talking about factors that are essential in developing printed modules. Join us for the next two hours of relevant discussion as we gear towards the full implementation of our care-centered learning model for school year 2020-2021. Before we start our program, I would like to present the rules that we have to observe during the online engagement. Here are our rules and reminders. To participate the question and answer portion, you may use the Q&A live chat. You can also email the speakers if you have questions about their topic. 
for questions related to the IRRs presented, you can email IRR hotline at dlsud.edu.ph. For documentation purposes, this webinar will be recorded. To receive your certificates, kindly go to Schoolbook, go to Courses, Enroll, Input Access Code, which will be uh, announced at the last part of the webinar, answer the webinar survey evaluation, which is good for 24 hours, and the certificate will be automatically awarded. All right, so at this point, I hope everyone is ready. Let us now formally start today's webinar. May we request Ms. Dormelin Casuela for the opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you for your blessing as we gather today in this webinar. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us a desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be the best we could be. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Ma'am Noor. Hello everyone, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, to all our administrators and faculty members from the college and high school department. Welcome to our fourth online faculty engagement entitled Printed Modules, Policies, Planning and Preparation. This learning session is once again brought to us and organized by the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. The objective of today's webinar are the following to discuss the policies related to the development of printed modules, to demonstrate the planning and preparation processes, to provide support to our faculty as they develop the modules, and to discuss the responsibilities of the faculty and the learners on the development, distribution, and submission of completed tasks in the modules. And now, to deliver his message, let us welcome the Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, and the Dean of the College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology, Engineer Jose Rizaldi de Armas. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, on behalf of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, I have the great pleasure to welcome you all to our third faculty online training series. I am also glad to welcome our presenters for today's webinar entitled Printed Modules, Policies, Planning, and Preparation which aim to discuss guidelines, planning, and preparation process related to the development of printed modules. Faculty responsibilities in the module development will also be tackled in the discussion later. To our speakers for today's webinar, we want to sincerely thank you for, for honoring our invitation in spite of very short notice. May I also use this opportunity to acknowledge the following hardworking committee members who are involved in the planning, preparation, and implementation of the faculty training and engagement activities. Dr. Pat Alcartado, Dr. Aldrian Dausan, Ms. Leonor Amasho, Mr. Ruel Paras, Ms. Grace Revuelta, Ms. Jennifer Arroyo, Mr. Edwin Bunag, Dr. Crispina Corpus, Ms. Norneline Cachuela, Dr. Relin Antenor Cruz, Engineer Natalie Pineda, Ms. Judith Taguman, Mr. Paul Anthony Notorio, the CILP team, and also the GMD team. And of course, to our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marcos Saez for the trust, support, and the opportunity given to the members to serve the committee. Again, let us take this opportunity to learn as we prepare for the coming semester. Welcome to our third webinar series. Have a good day ahead. Thank you, Sir Saldi. We shall now proceed to the introduction of our resource speakers. This morning, we have five resource speakers who will be sharing their different topics in line with printed modules, policies, planning, and preparation. To discuss 
qualification for home-based learning, fellow Lasallian educators, let us welcome our first resource speaker, the DLSUD Knight College Coordinator and Qualification for Home-Based Learning IRR Head, Mr. Pete Menzola. Good morning. So um, I am here to present um, the qualifications, the IRR for qualifications for home-based learning. So before I get to the point of my presentation, I would like to um, articulate that this um, IRR is um, a collective effort of um, faculty representatives by Josephine Cruz, um, Linda Lu Palomino, and and myself, and the Polka representative Rose Marigana Den, and the uh, FRA representative Normalin Pantino and um, a student representative from the student um, government, John Neil Manguera. Okay. And um, home-based learning has, I guess, two modalities. So the online using our LMS school book and using um, printed module. So the scope of this IRR or policy covers only those learners or students who are engaged or to engage in the printed module home-based learning. So to avoid mix-ups or confusions, so the following terminologies um, were um, defined. So we have conducive learning space. So that refers to an area at home where a learner can um, achieve learning at his or her comfort. And then home-based learning. So this is an alternative mode of learning with the use of printed module. And number three, printed module refers to a self-paced lesson learner activities developed, designed, and provided by departments. So these modules can be in manuscript form or in black and white or electronic copy. And then number four, we have technology infrastructure, and this is broadly refers to IT components such as hardware, softwares, and internet connectivity. So modules in e-copy form are considered um, printed modules. So e-copy may be in CDs or in USBs. So if a student is really zero tech, the student shall be provided with a module that is in black and white. Okay. So going to um, the general policy, the main um, qualification is um, refers to learning um, uh, the home-based learning refers to learning with the use of printed modules which uh, serve as an alternative mode for students who have no means of electronic um, infrastructure okay so that is the main qualification so people may ask why not change to limited access okay to tech infrastructure. So students with limited access may still be able to access the um, online learning. So most of, most of us naman are considered having limited access, considering our um, not so high tech or uh, top of the line hardwares and um, the lagging or instability of our internet um, service or connection. So what if they have a kapitbahay who is um, a computer shop? So well, I think that is having access and means to tech infrastructure. So moving on, the first um, qualification is that the learner must be officially enrolled in the university. So number two, learner is residing in an area with no internet connection or learner has no access, that's number three, to technological necessities such as computers, cell phones, laptops, and the likes. And number four, learner must be of age as identified by the IATF to be allowed to go out of home to get the module. So submit requirements using any means and or do consultation at the university. Or if not within the allowable age, has someone to do these for him or her. So what is what if the student is in Mindanao or the Visayas? So if so, the said student has obviously have access because he was able to do online enrollment but for um, special or bizarre cases this is um, the time i guess we figure out how the printed modules will be distributed and um, the obvious um, way really is to have it delivered by a courier and another issue 
will um, and uh, uh, who will pay for uh, the courier. Uh, moving on. So number five, learner must have a conducive learning space at home. And then next would be learner must be will, must be willing and committed to take home based learning. And then number seven, these are behavioral qualifications. Um, as to a learner when doing printed modules should be um, um, productive or have a good sense of productivity, self-discipline, trustworthiness, promptness, and focus. Okay. Number nine, learner must be able to establish a study routine with which parents are heavily involved for support, guidance, and monitoring. And lastly, learner must continue uh, continually observe compliance to the provisions of the student hand handbook. So the procedure, the learner who qualifies, so if he, uh, the learner will be, or the student will be applying, and if he qualifies in the home-based learning, he must fill out a conformity form, which I will show, uh, show you later. And then number two, learner should be able to get the module on the schedule of its distribution, which is yet to be um, identified, okay? And then the related documents, the conformity form, and any other IRR or policy that is in direct relation in the foregoing. So you can see on your screens um, the conformity form. So it was developed um, by the team. And then um, the learner who is qualified for um, the printed module, learning modality, will uh, be signing um, this um, form. Okay. And then this is um, the, the IRR for um, qualifications is um, still a work in progress. So if you have um, any questions or any suggestions, send your um, concerns and suggestions to the IRR care hotline. And the email address is um, right there on the screen. And um, so thank you very much. So that is um, the IRR for um, qualifications of all for home-based learning. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sir Pete. So that's that is our first topic. Now we'll move on to our um, next topic. Planning printed modules development. Let us welcome our second speaker, the curriculum committee head and syllabus related area committee chair, Dr. Evelyn Obo. Good morning po. Uh, again, I am here for the second time around. I was here last Wednesday and uh, I pray that you learned something. Again, I will be sharing something to you today. Uh, let me share. This. Ayan. So I am into, I will be talking about planning for printed module development. So eto po. So I just would like to explain to you how we are going to do it in order for you to understand it better. I have discussed this last Wednesday. We discussed po namin nila Sir Paul at Sir June. So balikan lang po natin ole how would it go? So we begin, of course, for the syllabus. Uh, we should be able to finish doing it. Medyo madugo. And then we go to the module map and I wish to answer uh, the question which was raised last time. How do we go about doing the module mapping? And then from the module map, we begin developing our printed module and I will be go. I, I will be giving you the snippet of how the printed module will be translated into an online module. So eto po, let's just go back. This was one of the slides that we presented last time. So sabi po namin, uh, these are the steps. So of course, the planning level, which would begin from the syllabus, which will be done from every department. And then once the syllabus has been approved, uh, you will automatically begin with this. So eto po yung itsura ng syllabus. 
I'd like to take this opportunity also to answer one question that was raised that the second page was in landscape. Uh, I we already made Sir Paul already made a full portrait template of the syllabus. So meron na po. I think it is already at the school book. So uh, you can use it. I was not able to update mine. So meron na po tayo na all portrait, full portrait sample of the syllabus, yung template mismo. It will be easier if you will be downloading the template coming from the school book because it will be easier for you to put in all the things that you needed to put. So ito po yung sample ko. I'm doing, uh, what I will be sharing with you is the subject that I am teaching. It's English 144, English for Specific Purposes. So, kunyari po, I'm able to finish, natapos na po namin. Eh, kasi po, dahil ako lang yung nagtuturo. So, of course, I will be the one to do the syllabus. So, this is it. So, let's focus on the learning plan. So, ayan na po yung learning plan. Uh, we have the CLO and we have the topic learning outcomes. And then, we have the number of modules. Uh, this AV, their topic learning outcomes and uh, course learning outcomes. So, pag meron na pong syllabus, so kunyari po, natapos nyo na. So, you will begin with module planning and development process. So, simula po tayo doon sa module mapping. So, why do we have to do the syllabus first? Because this will be the basis for the module that you will be developing. So, mag-develop na po ng module. So, ayan po, module map. So, sabi po nung isang question, paano po gawin yung module map? Oo nga po, we failed. I failed to discuss that. Nakakatakot, it's such a big word. Ano po ba yung module map? Simple lang po, I tried to make it very simple for you to be able to fully understand it. So, the simplicity of what I prepared so that it will also be very easy for everyone to follow and do. So, where will we base the module map? So, we are basing it at the course learning outcomes and at the topic learning outcomes. So I have here five, so I have 10 course learning outcomes. So the first five will be part of my midterm period modules. So I have already decided, kung grupo po kami, so we will decide. So ito po yung mga parts. These are the course learning outcomes that we will put in the modules that we will be developing. So paano po yung map? Ayan po, module map. So, ito po yung map. So, it's English 144. Sabi ko nga po, I tried to make it very simple. So, we have the midterm period. So, midterm and then the final term. And then, these are the number of modules that I will be preparing for the midterm period. So, there are four. Tackling the five course learning outcomes. So, yung module one po. So we have the module one, introduction to ESP, ESP definition and development, EGP, EOP, EAP, etc. Then module two will be ESP model, models and frameworks and the language, language theories in ESP development. Module three is conducting needs analysis and designing ESP syllabus. Module four is on assessment and evaluation. And then final term, I've got two modules, writing of ESP materials, and evaluation of ESP materials and module 6 using ESP developed materials in demo teaching. So sabi po dun sa IRR ng syllabus, the total number of modules must be agreed upon. Must be agreed upon by the departments and must be ensured that the time which students will consume to complete shall be within the allotted time stipulated in the syllabus. The number of modules shall depend on the established module mapping of each subject. So, bahala po kayo. It totally depends upon you how you're going to divide the modules. But we have here minimum of two and maximum of seven. Why minimum of two? Because there may be other disciplines or other departments, other subjects which you would just like to have two modules of different chapters, like one module for the midterm period and another module for the final term with different chapters in it. Pwede din po. But with me, I decided that I will be having separate modules. So, halimbawa po, based on my map, ang ginawa ko po na sample is yung module 4. Kaya po yun yung ginawa ko na sample that I will be sharing this with you later on, pati po yung sample ng module uh, 
printed and online kasi po so that you will be able to see the sample of how I did my summative exam and my self-care me time. Kaya yun po yung isha-share ko sa inyo. So, so syempre po, after po na may module map na kayo, you will be doing your printed module. So, paano? Well, I did it, Sir Paul did it, others I know are trying to do it at the moment. Uh, isa lang po, and I just want to be very honest with you, it is not easy. Ang hirap-hirap po gumawa ng modules. At naintindihan ko po because I've got friends who are communicating with me and telling me that it's not easy. Totoo po. I agree with you. You cannot finish one module in just one sitting. It could never be finished in just a, an hour or just a day. So naintindihan po namin because we have already went through the rigors of how we are going to do the printed module. If you're going to ask me how long was I able to finish the one sample of the module that I will be sharing with you, it took me days po. I was ch I was chatting with Paul the other day po. I told him I slept almost 4 a.m. the other night just for me to be able to uh, develop the modules because of course when you create your enabling activities, your enabling assessments, you would always have to think that are this in the lower order thinking skills? Are these examinations that you are designing or are these activities that you're designing in the higher order thinking skills? Because of course we have to follow that all the activities or most of the activities that we are doing, especially major examina examinations such as summative exams, must be in the higher order thinking skills. And just and, and just making four or five items would consume hours for you to be able to think of an application or how the students would be able to apply uh, the competencies that they have learned in the previous modules that we've given them. Kaya po talagang mahirap and we fully understand how difficult it is. So sabi nga po, to add to this, dun po sa IRR, we were saying that uh, at least we should be able, kasi there's a question which was asked, are we supposed to prepare all the mo modules for the midterm and for the final term? Ang sagot po namin, medyo mahirap. It's next to impossibility unless there's only one subject that the faculty is going to teach. Kaya nga po sabi namin, at least the whole of the midterm period modules must be developed. Sabi po namin, at least. And then, uh, last night when we had the meeting, at least sabi po namin with the experience that we've had, at least po yung three man lang, yung the first three weeks, the printed modules and uh, the online modules must be ready. Another question which I wish, wish to address, sabi po, kailangan ba talaga both modules, printed and online, must be prepared? Uh, kasi sabi po, how if a faculty teaching one particular subject and all students opted to use all all online modules. Do they still have to prepare printed modules? I am going to answer that now. Sabi po namin dun sa IRR, printed modules dun sa step-by-step -step, printed modules must be developed first as it is the basis for the online modules which will be developed. Ang sagot po namin doon, opo, it is very much needed that printed modules, even if all students are doing the online modules or opted for online uh, platform, would, we would still have the printed bucket. Uh, the rationale behind this is simple. Uh, there are a lot of calamities that we are experiencing. If we would recall uh, the eruption of the Al Volcano, which paralyzed not only the educational system, but almost everything. So if we have the printed modules ready, saved in our banks, in our USBs, and in our computers, it will always be very easy for us to continue the learning of our students. So it will always be easy for us to find solutions how the printed modules would suffice for the online modules. So that translates to another question. Could students go from printed, opting to printed modules to going online or vice versa? Answer is at least they should be able to finish one term using the printed module before they would be opting to going to online module and that is based on very strict policies. So may mga reason po tayo in order for us to consider it, which probably will be discussed by the other speakers. 
So tuloy po tayo, how are we going to do the printed modules? I did it in Word format. Sir Paul will be discussing later on how you are going to do the process of doing it. With me, I will be sharing with you the sample of the developed printed modules. It is in Word format. Allow me to share it with you. Ayan. Kita po. Uh, can you see what I am sharing po? Yes. I'm sharing this with you already. This is, uh... So, ito po yung ito po yung printed modules that I did. Uh, okay. Word doc, can you see it po? Nakikita ba? The Word document that I did. Word doc, wala. So you cannot see. Saglit lang po. Yun, kita na po. It's seen. Ayan, okay po. Thank you po, sir. So, ito po, this is the module that I, 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 I did for English 144. Sabi ko po, I did module 4 so that you'll be able to see all the parts that I included here. Pero sabi din po namin, we are only asking you for the four minimum contents, which I will be sharing this with you. Sir Paul did his own sample at modified po sa akin. So, you're totally, each department is totally given the leeway how you're going to do it, how you're going to uh, prepare your online module, uh, your printed modules. So, ito po, Sir Paul will be discussing how you're going to put the nitty-gritty. So, assessment and evaluation. So, ayan po. So, you should have the table of contents. Ayan. Sa table of contents, you will see po learning objectives, content presentation and learning activities, assessments, so, and then I have the summative examination here since this is the last module and the self-care me time activities. Ayan. So we begin with the learning objectives po. Ito po yung learning objectives ko. While going through the module, the students are expected to. So I've got six based on the CLO and the topic learning outcomes, which I included in, which are placed all in the syllabus. So ayan po. And then we begin with this. So, sinunod ko po yung tinuro sa amin dati that modules must be speaking to your students. They can do it by themselves. So, kaya ayun po, I'm trying to imagine that this particular image is me speaking to my students. So, I included the gospel. This is part of my choice of making the modules that I am doing lasalian. Ayan. So, I have the prayer and then I've got the task one as the Brief reflection about the gospel. Ito po, I put in there, this is a tear off page to be submitted to the subject teacher, thinking that since this is a printed module, the students will just tear off and this will be submitted uh, to the teacher, to the subject teacher. Tapos ito po, I tried to begin, this is my motivation part. It's actually, uh, 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 they will have to answer this. So, there's also criteria on how they will be graded. This is also a tour of page. And then this is the content presentation and learning activities. Actually, this title will not appear the on some module itself. Kaya lang po, for presentation purposes, I've got to put this. So, ito po yung beginning ko. I will just have to scan through it, uh, briefly go through it. So, ayan po. And then this is my discussion part. Ayan. So, the tasks. So, ito po yung tasks. 
ito yung activity task 3. So, always remember po that in the enabling assessments, uh, three activities yung nakalagay sa IRR, there has to be three sets of at least uh, maximum of 30 points per activity or per set. Ito po yung task 4. Ayan. So, ayan po. He, these are the answer sheets I put. And then this is the summative exam po, which I prepared. So, sabi po summative exam is a maximum of 40 to 50. So, eto po siya. Okay. So, even summative exam tear off. Ayan po, my evaluation. And then I put in here self-care kasi di ba po nandun din sa IRR yung self-care. So from the buffet of activities enumerated below, you may choose any that you think can make you feel relaxed and joyful after finishing half of the term or you may just identify any enjoy enjoyable activity that you intend to do. So eto po yung akin. This is just my way of doing it. Uh, inisip ko lang po, baka posibleng, this is how we could be helping our students. Like, I, I've got suggestions here, be part of any activity, and then I put the local numbers, and then how they would be able to communicate through the following offices. The last part of the module are the references. So, ito po yung nilagay ko. Now, after po nito, I would like to share with you, balik lang po ako ulit. So, if you are already okay with your modules, share ko po sa inyo just a snippet how we are going to translate what's written in the printed module in the online modules that you will be doing. I-share ko lang po sa inyo, even if this is not part, kasi development nga po of printed modules, pero from the printed modules, you will be developing your online modules already. So, paano? So, sabi po, always, when we are, when we were having our webinars during April and May, uh, for people from the CILP are always saying, when we develop online modules, uh, they're saying that they hope that we do not always prepare PowerPoint presentations. At least we should have uh, different types, different varieties when we translate it to online. So, tama naman po. Kaya lang po ako po talaga yung isashare ko din. I did it. Dalawa po yung pinrepair ko. What I did in the printed, I tried to translate it in the online. I-share ko lang po yung snippet of how I did. At sorry po, Sir Paul, because I prepared PowerPoint presentation and video naman. So, at least I prepared a video. So, i-share ko po sa inyo. I will be sharing with you yung PowerPoint ko naman po. Ayan. Okay po. So, yung PowerPoint presentation ko po, which uh, I did, PowerPoint ko po ito of the printed module that I did. So, if you could see, I tried to make it almost the same. Hindi po kaya ng 100% na pareho, but at least po uh, 95%, 90 to 95% of it. So, I started it with the gospel. So, kung ano po yung nakita dun sa printed module, this is what you're going to see. So, you have the prayer and then assessment and evaluation are, uh, the, the learning objectives for this particular topic are discussed. And then, eto po yung motivation ko and then off we go with what were also in the printed modules, but it can be modified. Tapos, ayan po, yung activities and assessments. Ganyan siya kasimple. Bakit po siya ganyan kasimple? I added a uh, uh, seven-minute video or at, uh, less than ten-minute video kasi yun lang po yung allowed for us to easily upload it. Why did I include uh, the video discussion of that? I, I read a study of one of our students in the graduate school. Uh, the study was about uh, why students would always choose to, to do face-to-face. -face. And 
the responses of students, of the respondent students there in the study was, it is always easier for students, others and their peers, when they see them to, ako ako, the findings in that particular study, that the modules that I will be preparing and modules online that I will be preparing would always be partnered or coupled with a video presentation of me discussing the topic or maybe any other videos that I could see online which is related to the topic that I will be discussing. So, I share ko po sa inyo yung video. Uh, share ko po. Snippet lang. Mambing. Pwede pa maximize po yung mambing. Screen nyo po para mak... Alin po, Mac? I, I will share. This is the end of the midterm, and soon you will be doing all the evaluation. You are going to have the summative examination. So I am sure and I hope that you will feel very excited as you go along doing this. So before we begin, I want all of us to pray first. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. Let us pray. Lord, our loving Father, we thank you for giving us this day for the opportunity of learning about assessment and evaluation. May the learning that we will get for today help us to become better evaluators of ourselves, for us to become better Christians. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. All right, everyone. So you're going to do your first task. You're going to write a brief reflection about the gospel, and you will be graded here for five points. As I've said, our topic is assessment and evaluation. So what are the learning objectives of this particular topic? While going through the module, you're expected to write a brief reflection about the gospel, which I just said, that's task one. You're to answer the moderation question. I shall be explaining it later on. You're going to explain the differences and between assessment and evaluation. You're going to assess the lesson plan, which you previously prepared. You're going to answer the summative exam and you're going to facilitate your own self-care activity. All right, so task two. I want to ask you one question and you will have to, you will be graded here for 10 points. You'll be graded according to clarity of points and organization of thoughts for both five points. That's why you have a total of 10 points. The question is, why do we need to evaluate or give assessments at all times? Aren't you questioning why at the end of every, every lesson you need to take your quiz, at the end of every semester you need to evaluate your teachers, and sometimes you also pause for a while because you wanted to evaluate yourselves. Did you do well? Were you able to uh, get all the competencies needed? So the question here is, why do we need to evaluate or to give assessments all the time? This is our lesson. We have to know the purpose of assessment and evaluation. Let's try to take a look at this picture. It says here, assessment is to increase quality. Increase quality. While evaluation is to judge the quality. So for assessment, your aim there is for you to make a particular student improve his or her performance. And evaluation is when you try to grade the student 
for the full term or for the full quarter. So that. So yun po. I just shared this with you. Not all of it. Uh, So, hindi po lahat shinare ko because we are sharing this at the school book naman. Um, you can you can try to balik po ako. Yeah. Uh, you can try to access this because I will be sharing this at school book and I'll be asking Sir Paul to make it available for you. So, Ano lang po, uh, what I'm trying to say is when you try to plan uh, doing your printed and your online uh, modules, at least po, students would be able to uh, feel that it's just the same. We are not shortchanging students. Both our students in the printed and in the online would be getting the same things that they needed to get from us. So. Yun lang po. So I just hope that I am able to share something to you, uh, something that you will be able to use, something that will guide you as you try to develop your syllabus, your module, the printed one, and the online modules. Uh, Sir Paul will be giving you all the details on how you're going to do it, the technicalities of it. So maraming maraming salamat po. I know it will not be easy, but I know all of us will be able to carry on. God bless us all po. Thank you, Ma'am Beng. Thank you for sharing your works. Salamat po. At this point, we shall now proceed to our next speaker. But uh, before that, for all our participants who have uh, some questions, you may start sending your question using our um, live event chat. We'll be having our question and answer portion right after our um, last speaker last speaker's presentation. So at this point, We shall now proceed to our third speaker to discuss the topic on printed modules preparation. Joining us this morning, let us welcome the director of the Center for Innovative Learning Programs and Syllabus Related Area Committee co-chair, Mr. Paul Anthony Nodorio. Hello po. Uh, good, good morning to everyone. So, uh, andito po ulit ako kami uh, to share. Uh, this is uh, some sort of continuation from the last time. So, uh, Mambing, uh, focused more on the planning of uh, the, the printed module. So, yung nitty-gritty po, uh, some of the parts here are required. Some are just here to enhance the layout and design of uh, the printed module. So, let me go through each of this one by one po. Uh, by the way, uh, in, the in the question and answer, I saw some uh, asking for copies. All copies are uploaded na po when you enter the, the access codes. The sample of the mo sample modules, even the IRR, uh, the guides are, are uploaded already. Uh, okay, one by one lang po. Uh, this is a module that I created. Uh, yun po. Um, basically, uh, one, uh, isa isahin po natin mula sa first part until the last part. So, header, please uh, put header. Uh, I, I, I put here the logo of the un uh, university and the uh, college. And then, yung pung module title. Yun po. So, uh, it's your choice naman po. Um, okay, uh, yan po. <laughs> May uh, page number, please don't forget uh, to add a page number. Yun po. So, very simple lang naman. And of course, uh, what you see in the middle is the uh, entire module title. But don't forget to include the author. Okay, uh, may, may para may attribution din po. <laughs> and then, sa baba po, uh, 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 I, I included yung name ng department again, college, and then the university. Okay, uh, this is just an example. Okay, and then we proceed to the next uh, font. What are you, what font are you going to use? So these are source uh, two sources po uh, from the net which cites what are the best font. So in in uh, all the modules that I created, I used Baskerville, but it's up to you what what you prefer. Okay, tapos uh, medyo nag, uh, may konting pakulupo ang ginawa ko dun sa, sa mga headers. 
Bali, uh, in my case po, I downloaded the font of the Department of Tourism since it's a, a, a free font naman uh, to be used uh, uh, by all. Uh, yan po, para may pang tourism po kasi yung topic. So, tourism yung font. Tapos meron din ako, I, I tried to download different fonts that pertains to uh, uh, Philippine uh, tourism and culture. So, it's up to you how you do that. But of course, uh, make it make sure that readable po yung mga fonts. Okay. And then for the, the main text, you can use any of the suggested here. But again, these are just suggestions. Okay. You can still use uh, your own. Okay. Uh, what about the font sizes? Again, these are just suggested. Uh, in the cover page, at the at the cover page, pero dapat malalaki yung font. Then there are main headings and subheadings. Uh, these are the, the suggested font sizes. Okay, so for the main text, uh, not uh, ideally not lower than font size 11. So 12 po, ideally. Okay, this is just an example uh, of uh, the font size na 12. Tapos yung header po niyan is uh, 24. May font po kasi na kapag 24, kasing laki lang ng font size 18 <laughs> ng other fonts. So uh, you just have to experiment on on the font sizes okay um, of course don't forget the table of contents okay in if you're going to do a, a, a school book module an online module naka layout na po kasi dun yung pagkakasunod-sunod parang table of contents na po but in a printed module it would be difficult for students especially if your module is more than one week long uh and it has many contents it would serve as a guide maybe a, even a checklist for student uh, if they were able to finish already that, that part of the module. Okay. So, but again, uh, you do the table of contents after you completed the entire module. Okay. And then uh, don't forget the gospel. Of course, you can use text, you can use photo. I use photo here uh, yan po, um, uh, as part of the gospel. And then I, I included a brief reflection page for, for them to answer. Okay. Uh, divisions and sections. Again, this is just for for uh, uh, a, a matter. It's a matter of prerogative or preference. Uh, I have one module, and this module has three chapters. Now uh, you can use units. You can use part one, two, three, or section one. It's up to you. Uh, yun po. Uh, then uh, uh, I I, in, uh, I indicated the outcomes po on how it is also cascaded. Yan, uh, may, may course learning outcomes. Ang ginawa ko po dun sa topic learning outcomes, ginawa ko pong module learning outcomes, pero pag uh, transform ko na po siya sa online, magiging uh, topic learning outcomes na rin po siya. Ayan po. So, ayan. Um, okay, this is an example of uh, introduction module. Uh, again, you can play around with the content. Uh, in my introduction module, uh, again, it starts with a gospel. It's like the first meeting. I introduce myself. Uh, uh, by the way, there's a sample introduction module uploaded at Schoolbook. You can uh, adapt that. Okay, pero naka PDF file po siya. <laughs> Para po, ano, yan. Um, uh, teacher introduction, there's a part there where students will write for their own introduction. Okay po, and then I included tips on how they will succeed in learning via printed modules. Uh, I did a comparison between online and printed module and then uh, various communication platform. In the communication platform, I set there a time, a schedule where they can text or they can call. Mas ano po, uh, yun po. And then uh, the copy of the syllabus is included there. Uh, I introduced the lesson and then a diagnosis test was, was uh, also uh, included. Okay. Uh, ito po yung mga sample parts po nung uh, introduction module. So, yun pong nasa pinaka-left. That's my introduction, my self-introduction. Okay. And then the rest, yan po, sample. Uh, you can view it naman po sa schoolbook po. You can download it. Um, okay. Ito po yung kanina. Uh, I, 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 I did a cascading uh, outcomes. How the chapters relate to the overall course learning outcomes. Ag uh, yeah, yan po. Uh, it's up to you how you present the outcomes for the module. It, ito lang yung, it's a matter of preference lang. <laughs> yan po yun sa akin. Uh, of, I also included chapter details which includes uh, what tools do they need uh, aside from the module itself. Do they need ball pen, scratch paper, or may optional din po ako nilagay if they have maps. Uh, but if they don't have, they can 
the, a map is provided uh, within the module. Okay po. And then I break uh, uh, down ko po lahat ng mga activities so that uh, the students uh, and even the teacher will be guided that this is good for one week because if you total the number of minutes, it's three hours. So it, it's also a guide for you. Baka mamaya nag-over, ano tayo, overemphasize sa assessment. Ang nilagay natin sa syllabus, one week lang. Pero sobrang hirap pala ng assessment. It would take them uh, about three meetings pa pala. So yun po. Uh, it serves also as a guide for the teacher. Uh, okay, I included a part uh, if in the school book we have gamification, I tried my best. Actually, uh, there are many ideas that I got from Sir Marco Polo's presentation. Uh, this is an unlocking activity or a starting activity. It's a game activity. So it's famous, uh, yung mga uh, emoji quiz. So they will guess the place. Uh, each chapter has a different, uh, what do you call this, pakulo <laughs> about the games. Uh, yan po. You can uh, start it as a question or an activity or an assessment. Okay. Uh, Yan po. Again, this is not a required part in the module. This are required, pero it 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 helps a lot for the student. It's it makes the printed module uh, a bit more fun. Uh, the main body or content, ito yung pinakamakapal po na part of the module. Okay, uh, and uh, according to the printed module guide, uh, it's better if you combine photos or media. Yun po, uh, which I will talk about in the next uh, two to three slides. Photos and smart art. I use a lot of that in the modules. So photos, uh, let's uh, be careful po in, in putting photos. Do not include photos na ma-infringe po yung copyright. Later po, i discuss when is our aims yun. But um, there are two ways on how you can add picture uh, that uh, will not infringe copyright. So you have to cite it, of course. But then again... Um, uh, in the word, in MS Word itself, you can click insert and online pictures and then make sure na naka-check po si Creative Commons so that it would show uh, this. However, I have a better suggestion actually. Uh, it's to use Bing. I tried to explore Google search for photos. Wala pong ganang provision. Sa Bing po meron. If you're going to click filter and license, you can actually click free to modify, share, and use commercially. So for the textbook users who wanted to include photos, uh, ito po yung magandang way on how to make sure na yung photos that we're going to put in our modules or textbooks uh, can be used uh, commercially. So meron pong filter po siya. Okay, so that's a suggestion. And then uh, I use a lot of this in my uh, modules, a smart art. So, para medyo yung layouting, you don't have to manually lay out. So, there's already a suggested layout. I used a lot of uh, a smart art in my uh, module. Okay. So, uh, yun po. Click insert and then just click smart art and it will provide you suggestions on uh, the layout of, of uh, each page or content. Uh, now, going to the assessment. Um, uh, I, I have included uh, profiling of the assessment. Of course, instruction rubric are very important, especially rubric if it's not objective type. Dapat po may rubric and then the assessment proper. Proper, sorry. Um, this is an example of the profile. Each assessment meron pong ganito. And by the way, let me take this opportunity. Uh, we have changed po yung terminology uh, as suggested in the uh, previous webinar. Yun po, yung formative assessment po ay talagang Din, sa, sa module po, dinelegate na siya as not graded. Tapos yung, yung formative assessment na term ay pinalitan po ng enabling. So ang na-retain po sa term is yung summative. So in, yung, yung dating defined po na, definition ng, ng formative assessment, napalitan po yung term into uh, enabling. Tapos nun, if you're going to include formative, it must not be graded. Yan po. So this is an example. Again, just like the case of Ma'am Beng, uh, it's a tear of page. So the, the, the page of the assessment, kung ibabalik po ni student, kahit yung assessment la lang po, yung ibabalik sa teacher for checking. So, ayan po, medyo naglagay lang ako ng estimated duration, what outcomes are measured in this uh, assessment, ayan po. So, uh, this, uh, of course, include a self-care me time in your module. So, ayan po, um, I, I uh, base this on the self-care IRR. So, meron pong uh, seven domains po. 
So may suggestion ang ginawa ko po nag-suggest ako sa bawat isa. Sa IRR naman po may mga suggestions po doon kung ano yung gagawin ni student. So tina-try ko siyang i-relate sa subject, medyo mahirap nga lang. Ayun po. Pero uh, yun po, pag physical, nag-suggest ako diyan uh, to climb the stairs, mga ganun. <laughs> Or uh, read uh, browse your old photos, something like that. Uh, yun po. Of course, uh, alternatively they can do nothing, just relax. Okay. Uh, and then references uh, ako po ay, um, I'm a big fan of the auto-referencing uh, part uh, or feature of MS Word. So, para hindi na po ako mag-configure manually isa-isa nung references. So, ini-input ko na lang po sa resources. Then, after nun, i-click ko na lang po yung, pipili na lang po ako ng format. Unfortunately, uh, hindi ko po nahanap yung format ng uh, CSCS. Wala po siya sa uh, automated, uh, automatic generated format po sa Word. So this is what it looks like uh, uh, in your MS Word. Go to References, tapos nun, uh, click Manage Sources, and then uh, just choose a style. Tapos nun, uh, to generate the bib uh, the bibliography, pipiliin yun na lang po yung uh, style po. Tapos nun, yun, lalabas na po siya in your preferred uh, format. Automatic, it uh, converts everything. So um, summative assessment po, ayan, dagyan nyo rin po. Not all modules are required to have summative assessment. It depends on your learning plan. But in the sample, uh, there are, the, the sample module of Mambeng, may sample module, may introduction module po, is uploaded as an example. Uh, it's uploaded in schoolbook. Okay. Uh, if, uh, this is, uh, based on the meeting yesterday night, uh, how does a teacher or the uh, coordinator or the administrator, how will they evaluate? Uh, I remember this was emailed to us last April, if I'm not mistaken, late April. Um, these are the guide for printed modules. Uh, you can check here. Actually, uh, we have checked, hindi naman siya nagko-conflict sa lahat ng developed IRR. Uh, check this uh, and to see if the the, uh, the module that you created conforms to this standard. Again, this guide was emailed before, but it's also included again in the resources section ng uh, schoolbook, dun sa e-class din po. Kasama din po siya for guide. So I think that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. We will answer the questions later. Thank you po. Thank you, Sir Paul. Thank you for sharing your works. Um, our next webinar topic is home-based learning, faculty, and student responsibilities. And to give or deliver his presentation, let us welcome the home-based learning, faculty, and student responsibilities IRR committee head, Mr. Jerome Buhay. Uh, good morning. Do you hear me? Or can you hear me? Uh, is my voice clear? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you. Okay, uh, let me show you uh, the IRR. I would like to stress that, stress out that, uh, sorry, this IRR is uh, just, you know, uh, this is just a draft, you know, meaning uh, this is still subject for uh, revisions and uh, we are very much willing to collect uh, collect all uh, comments and suggestions from you. So, uh, first, I would like to uh, thank the the members of this committee. So, this is actually the effort of all the uh, committee members, and of course, me. First, let's go with the objective of this IRR. Now, this policy simply aims to identify the responsibilities of faculty members and, of course, the learners in printed module delivery. So, we need to say this policy is intended only for those who will be um, uh, subscribed to printed module. So this will not cover the online module or the online learning. The scope, now the policy covers the responsibilities of the faculty and learners in the delivery and accomplishment of printed modules. So uh, the main um, 
uh, focus of this uh, policy is more on how are we going to deliver or distribute modules, uh, what are the specific responsibilities of the faculty, both in development and uh, of course the uh, distribution of module. Okay, definition of terms. So first, the home-based learning is actually adapted from the IRR created by the group of Sir Pete Menjola, which was presented earlier. That is the IRR on the qualification of those who will be, uh, those who opted printed module in learning modality. So we have the same definition. I adapt, we adapted the definition from their uh, work. So this is an alternative mode of learning with the use of printed module and or USB. Number two, the learner. So this refers, of course, to the students who are enrolled and are qualified to avail the printed module learning modality. Now take note that we stress out the word here, who are qualified. Why? Because we have an IRR that covers qualification of students who are or who are uh, who can avail actually of the printed module learning modality and then for the printed modules this refers to a self-paced lesson and learning activities designed and provided by the department printed modules may be in black and white or electronic form again the definition of printed modules that adapted from the irr created by the group of sir p Benjola. now for the general general policy one the faculty responsibility. So letter A, we have on the preparation of module. So basically, members of, or the faculty members are required. We are required to create the prescribed module for his or her course or subject. However, the chair of the department must see to it that modules subject for preparation is well distributed among the faculty members of the department. So the idea here is that to avoid uh, uh, an equal distribution of modules. Kasi po, uh, there might be some case, the case that uh, one faculty will create two or three modules, then there is a group of faculty, say two or three members in a group that will only create one module. So, baka, uh, the, the department chair can come up with a solution that these modules be distributed equally. So, po. now, and there must be a qualification. No, number one, uh, qualification for faculty uh, who are assigned in the preparation of module. One, if, it, if the subject is assigned to the faculty. So that is one. Now, suppose it is not uh, assigned to you, but you have especially say uh, you are you are teaching the subject for the last or the last two semesters or more two or more semesters so this is for GE or institutional subjects so bakit po for GE lang to institutional subjects now take note po that we had a change in curriculum because of the K12 the effect of K12 nagbago po tayo ng curriculum and uh, sa ngayon po, I think two years pa lang po tati nagagamit yung ating new curriculum. And for this coming school year, uh, one of the problems will be uh, the teaching or the students who will be enrolled in major subjects. So most likely, uh, hindi pa nila natuturo to. Or possible din naman po na the subjects ay uh, experience na rin yung faculty na ituro. Uh, you as uh, kumparehas lang yung subject sa new and sa old curriculum. And then of course specialization in the assigned subjects. Meaning to say if you are not uh, assigned to teach the subject but you are uh, you have uh, specialization on this. So pwede pa rin pong i-assign ni department chair si faculty to help those who will teach the subject to come up with a module. So these are some of the qualifications. Number two, uh, under the development, so the modules must be aligned with the syllabus. So in parallel with the, the development, 
or preparation of module at least covers the midterm part of the semester and the remaining part of the modules must be completed one week before the midterm examination. So this is to give more time to the faculty to come up with the module kasi ay, ay naniniwala po yung aming committee. We believe that it's very difficult for us to come up with the whole uh, module which covers uh, the midterm and the final term. So that's why we decided that uh, siguro uh, okay if hanggang midterm part lang muna. Okay? But there is a ano, uh, meron po siyang time na kung kailan dapat mapasa yung midterm and the uh, final period ng that covers the module. Okay, for the distribution of module so the faculty in cooperation with the department curriculum and e-learning committee and department chair shall provide a copy of the printed module to the office of the registrar so for distribution of the learners meaning by from this the faculty is not the one who will distribute the module so our our uh, our uh, responsibility is to simply send a copy of the module to the university registrar so uh, and the university registrar will be the one who will distribute the modules to the learners so they will design of course uh, a way on how to distribute it number two faculty will be distributing printed modules twice in a semester ito nga po yung sinasabi ko why because we assume we are assuming that the module eh, will come in in parts no the midterm part and the final final period uh, period part so first at the most two days before the distribution schedule of the OUR so meaning to say we have to come up with our at least midterm part and submit it to the OUR two days before the scheduled dis distribution of the OUR and the second part will be one week before the midterm examination so this yung one week po before the midterm examination is the final final period the module that covers the final period and then modules will include enabling and summative assessments but so ito po yung but ano the answer key will be put on hold so ang decision namin is not to include the answer key of the enabling and summative assessments but if you have some form formative assessments so you can include the answer key of your formative assessments but not the enabling and the summative assessments then faculty responsibility on communication the faculty shall ensure consistency on one secure contact information of the learners Parents, guardians. So, niligap ko po ng red yung parents and guardians because uh, hindi lang po learners yung dapat we have contact information but also their parents or guardians. So, contact information can be on in the form of mobile number, landline number, or phone number, uh, other possible communication tools such as emails, uh, FB accounts, or the likes. Then maintaining open communication line with the learners. So limitations on communication should be strictly observed. So such as during Sundays and holidays. So for Sundays and holidays, uh, reserve na lang natin sa mga bata yun. Let's give it to them. Uh, enjoy the day. No? Wala po munang communication. But uh, Monday to Saturday, as long as it is not a holiday, then we can communicate with our with the learners. Okay, monitoring learner performance and submission of requirements and assessment. So, so kailangan, uh, you have to remind the student, the learner, na, or oh, the submission is on this day, so please uh, make sure that you will be able to comply, sorry, uh, with the uh, deadline. Then providing feedback regarding uh, regarding requirements and assessments regularly as prescribed in the syllabus okay feedback regarding enabling and summative assessments shall be forwarded to the learners three weeks after submission by the learner so when the learner submits when the learner submits to us their uh, his or her uh, enabling and summative assessments we have to make sure that within 
the next three weeks, I we, we can able to give them the result of their enabling and summative assessments. Okay? Siyempre, na na po yung, kito, yung uh, answer key. Feedback po to. Then letter D, sorry, faculty are required to implement IRR for self-care. So I think in our syllabus committee, for the self-care, we have six hours total in uh, one SEM. So three hours in the midterm period and three hours in the final period. So it's up to do kung kailan nyo ibibigay yung kanilang self-care, kung anong time, kung anong schedule, anong date. Pero ang recommendation ay during the summative, summative assessment week. The summative assessment week. Now, second is the learner's responsibility. Letter A, learners shall secure copy of printed module or e-copy on prescribed schedule of distribution. So this is until uh, under, still under negotiation. The printing cost shall be shouldered by the institution. Okay. Now for the learner shall secure copy because it was uh, stated, it is stated in the IRR for qualification that a learner, the learner or the any representative of the learner shall be the one to secure the copy of the module. So, still subject to comments pa rin and suggestions po itong distribution na muta. The letter B, learner shall ensure with diligence and honesty accomplishment of tasks provided in the printed module. So, this is more on the character naman ng bata. The letter C, uh, learners shall constantly have open communication line. So again, uh, responsibility ng learner that they ask for our number, landline number, uh, our consultation hours, consultation day, and they have to communicate with us and ask us uh, the feedback of their, from, uh, of, from their submitted assessments. Now, however, should there be a change in learner's contact information, learner is obliged to inform his, her professor. Kasi merong uh, experience in the past that uh, the students uh, no longer use the, uh, the uh, provided cell phone number or so nawala na sila ng communication. So in this case, po, if this scenario will happen, uh, the student or the learner must must inform us or give us uh, his or her new contact information. Letter D, learners shall submit all assessments and other requirements on prescribed deadlines set by the OUR. All other policies regarding this matter shall be referred to the IRR course design for deadlines and lifelines. Now, why uh, uh, prescribed by the OUR? Uh, because when the student submits all the assessments, so we will get the assessment from the office of the university registrar. Ganun po. Para yung bata hindi pupunta sa department or any representative of the learner will, will, uh, will come to our department and submit their assessment. This is, the objective actually is to limit contacts, no? because of the fear of uh, spread of COVID-19. Letter E for the behavioral. One, observe punctuality at all times. Respect should always be observed in dealing with professors. Honesty shall always be considered in performing task assessments. So the related documents, so any IRR policy that is in direct relation in the foregoing. Uh, the members of the committee, uh, we have, I myself, Mr. Jerome Buhay, uh, from the College of Education. We have uh, Ms. Relin S. Antenor Cruz. Uh, the Faculty Association Representative, we have Dr. Jose Alejandro Alex Tenorio. 
And we also have the handsomest of them all, Mr. Pete Epitasio Menjola, and my idol, Mr. Domingo Reblora Jr. from the Re Department. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Sir Jerome. We are now on our last webinar topic on module making intellectual property guidelines to share relevant information in relation to intellectual property. Let us welcome our intellectual property coordinator, Dr. Jose Ames Rosina. Uh, hello. Uh, a pleasant, a pleasant um, uh, morning to all. Uh, I will be sharing with you the intellectual uh, property guidelines and um, uh, hopefully we will we'll be able to, to learn no? a lot from, from this. So I would like to mention that these are just the draft uh, guidelines. It's the subject to change. And hopefully you will be able to um, ask questions at the, at the end of the presentation because uh, I might be answering them uh, as I go along the way now. So, uh, Yes. <clears throat> okay, so I will now be presenting my, my PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, as I've said, these are the uh, module making uh, intellectual property guidelines uh, brought to you by the DLSUD Intellectual Property Office. And the rationale of this uh, uh, guidelines is, of course, because of the pandemic, no? uh, the global pandemic, uh, COVID 19. And uh, its purpose, of course, is to provide quality education to the uh, students. So uh, this is based on the uh, Lasallian uh, care-based education, which is to be delivered in the form of modules. So these uh, Lasallian values-based modules will uh, facilitate the delivery of high-quality lessons and provide a venue where both faculty and student enriches the exchange of ideas and knowledge. So the purpose, of course, is to make learning truly a unique uh, Lasallian educational uh, experience. So let's go to the definition of terms. So uh, I refer modules as um, a method. No? Why is it? Uh, I consider it a method because uh, if we if we look at it, it it we are just developing modules now because really to printed modules, for example, is really to answer the pandemic. So before we we did not really uh, made make these modules. So it's a a method of delivery of education to students, uh, which may or may not involve the use of learning materials, and they are crafted to provide a complete educational learning experience to students. So uh, ebooks so. Uh, I've noticed some questions there. What if we use our, our books or convert it to ebooks? So uh, it could be this could be a soft copy or e version of a printed book. It could be downloaded in the USB or in its uh, virtual form via other gadgets. No? And uh, the copyright, which refers to rights uh, vested in individual for entitlements based on creation. So I just uh, made a shortcut of the definition. So actually, I made a um, um, the next part should be the module making process, but I will defer this to the uh, syllabus committee because they have their own process and uh, we need to synchronize it first. So I will just be dealing with uh, intellectual property rights. So uh, who owns the copyright of these modules? No? Uh, there is a law. Republic of 8293, which governs uh, the ownership of copyright. And uh, in section 178.3 of the, the law, it provides that in the case of war created by an author during and in the course of his employment, the copyright shall belong to the employee if the creation of the object of copyright is not a part of his regular duties. 
So my example here would be a janitor. So the pro the duty of the janitor is to clean, of course. But let's say the janitor in his free time, even in school, uh, he created a painting of a Filipino Mona Lisa. Now it's a part of his duty because his duty is to clean, right? But he is a uh, he has this passion to make art. So the copyright of that painting, of course, belongs to him, not to the employer. But if the work is the result of the performance of his regularly assigned duties, unless there is an agreement to the contrary, then the copyright belongs to the employer. Uh, I know no, that uh, we want to have a copyright of, the, of our creations, but uh, the law must have a reason why it is the employer. Uh, and uh, we all know that it is part of our regularly assigned duties to, to teach. And we cannot teach during this pandemic period uh, without creating a module. So we really need to sacrifice, no? uh, make a module uh, just for to address these uh, times, these abnormal times. So this, this copyright ownership of the module belong to the university as um, these uh, faculty members were uh, these, uh, faculty members were in the performance of their regularly assigned duties, which is uh, to create modules as part of their tools in teaching their subjects during the pandemic. So I, if you notice at the top, I uh, in the course of the employment is in bold because that is the main uh, uh, reason why the the uh, module will belong to the employ uh, the copyright module now. Uh, will belong to the employer. So we have here a case, not the case of King versus South Africa uh, Weather Service. And here in this case, uh, it was defined there what is the meaning of in the course of his or her employment. First, is the nature of an employer's business, is it in congruence no, with the product developed, or let's say in this case, the module? And we can see that uh, they are uh, in a tune no, because. Um, it's an educational uh, institution and we are teaching. Uh, so the module is in congruence with that. What about the nature of an employee's duties? Uh, our duty, of course, is to teach and we created this module to facilitate our teaching. And the, the main con consideration is the third one, the cost between the employment and the product developed. The ultimate question here is, why did you create this module? It's because you are employed by the La Salle Las Marinas, right? I mean, if you are not, if we are not employed by the La Salle, we will not create this module. So, like in the case of King, you no, know, he created a a computer program that will address the the weather uh, in South Africa. So he will not create that if if he's not part, if he's not employed of the South African Weather Service. So that is the this is actually the pillar of why copyright uh, belongs to the employer, okay? And another, the last, of course, to be considered is the time and resources used, but this is not really controlling. This is just a factor no, in the consider consideration of who owns the copyright. All right, so after the law, we go now to our uh, intellectual property policy. This was approved uh, six or seven years ago by the Academic Council. and. Uh, Section 8.21 of the University Policy of Copyright says that it, if, it is a, if it is a university funded work or provided through the university, then the copyright belongs to the university. OK, and we all know that uh, indirectly we have been funded by uh, the BDSMA, uh, not in a monetary way, perhaps, but through trainings, nah? uh, through support and other uh, means. And in fact, if we go to our IFS, no? part there is uh, we will part there is the creation of instructional materials, so we can consider that really as part of our function. And uh, of course, this module delivery uh, will be provided by the university through the schoolbook in terms of the e uh, modules and for the printed modules through other institutional facilities like uh, the registrar, no? so as discussed by Mr. Jerome Buhai. So. Uh, because it is provided for the university, it is partly funded. So this is one of the arguments, okay? But there's a question, what about if you use our textbooks or let's say convert it to ebook? Uh, where uh, does the copyright belong to the university or the faculty publisher? So 
it will belong, of course, to the faculty or the publisher. Why? Because uh, it was already copyrighted. No? I'll give you an example. We have the case of Darna. So Darna from comics by Marsh Ravello to movie. So the producer of the movie must pay uh, Marsh Ravello uh, because of the conversion uh, of his work to, to the movie. So it's just the same in a, in a similar way. Uh, the module here is already actually copyrighted when even it was still in the form of a textbook. So I know that some of us wants to uh, turn, want to transform no, our uh, textbook into module form. So this is the so uh, we could be compensated for this. <clears throat> OK, another provision of the IP policy provides that copyright belongs to the university if the facilities resources used during the conduct of the work are owned by the university, of course. Uh, we all know that some of our uh, resources come from the library no? or from the e-services, but but this is not controlling. Uh, this is just one of the factors. So uh, whether you, uh, whether your resources are from the university or not, uh, uh, it, the university could still own it. Uh, so the general rule is copyright of copyright is if it, it belongs to the creator at the moment of creation. So let's say I created a poem right now. At the very second that I finish it, it belongs to me, right? But uh, and for, uh, under IP law, uh, there are exceptions. No? And uh, there must be a reason for the lawmakers why uh, they say that the copyright, in, in, if, the, if it is in the course of the employment and in the performance of regular duties, must belong to the institution. Uh, however, there is no provision under the law that uh, it, it, this does not preclude the faculty concern to negotiate for benefits either in monetary form or it could be in uh, in uh, a non-monetary non form. So even though copyright belongs to the university, uh, the faculty, uh, we can still actually uh, negotiate, uh, um, uh, appeal to the magnanimity of the university. Uh, and perhaps if there are available uh, resources, perhaps I think uh, the university would, would allow this, but it depends now. OK, so when it comes to revenue sharing, the modules made by the faculty will be used strictly as part of instruction and thus revenues will inure solely to the university. I'm referring here to the tuition, so it belongs to the university and uh, the modules made by the faculty will be used strictly for instruction. In fact, uh, I heard that the university will not charge the students for these modules. So, if, but if the module will be commercialized or utilized outside university premises or outside its intended purpose, the faculty members who crafted the module will receive 20% of the uh, revenues. No? And uh, likewise, if another private entity collates the modules into a learning material, the university and the faculty concern will be uh, compensated. Let's say, Three, two years from now, there is no more pandemic and um, a publisher outside says, oh, we have uh, good modules and we will try to collate it and publish it. Then uh, the university and the faculty will have to, to get the share no, from that because that is not, outside, that is outside the purpose of the making of the modules. And finally, if uh, organizations no, or offices uh, we also can also be charged with a minimal fee for the use of modules, these modules, because this is already outside no? the, the main intention of the module, which is to, to benefit uh, the students uh, during this uh, period. OK, and uh, this is my uh, last slide. Um, so can we use our ebooks and textbooks? Of course, you can put them, uh, put them in the references and uh, the royalty, of course, from the selling of such ebooks will inure solely to the benefit of the faculty. But remember that we have uh, the LSUD textbook guidelines chaired by Dr. George Francisco. And uh, according to the uh, guidelines, we must uh, receive around 10% to the department. So um, that is the only share to the to the to the department, right? So uh, we can actually convert our textbooks into modules. And uh, in that case, the, the copyright will belong to the uh, faculty. OK, so other matters pertaining to ebooks will also be governed by provisions in the textbook guidelines in a supplementary manner because the, the, the LSUD textbook guidelines is only for printed no? because at that time the, there was no pandemic yet. So but it could be applied in a supplementary manner to ebooks. 
and uh, learning materials, uh, other learning materials of similar nature are also be governed by the textbook guidelines. And copyright also of these ebooks. Now, what, once the textbook is transformed again to an ebook, of course, uh, it's just a conversion. It will be it will belong to the authors or publishers uh, or both, not depending on the agreement. But usually, it's uh, both the publisher and the the author. Okay, so let me end my presentation with uh, Maxim. Uh, Lex nun uh, difficile protest in justicia exibenda. The law cannot fail in dispensing justice. So we'll just have to to uh, take it that the law has, has its own reasons and the lawmakers have their own <coughs> reasons. So for comments and suggestions, you have to email uh, the LSUD IPO at Jeff Flores at the LSUD .edu .ph if you have uh, questions because I'm uh, I'm not sure now that all questions can be answered during this time. So uh, that ends my part. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Ames. Uh, thank you so much. That was very informative. Uh, thank you, Sir uh, Pete, Mambeng, Sir Paul, and Sir Jerome for sharing your presentations. Um, at this point, we are now to um, answer questions posted in our live event chat. I would like to acknowledge those people who are working behind this webinar. We have Dr. Corpus and Sir Edwin who are, who are publishing the question and also the other members of the committee. So we have um, several questions and uh, we have the first one from Sir Roland Lorenzo, which is also somehow similar to the question of Ms. Billiones. The question is, um, may, se may survey po ba to determine whether the students prefer HBL or online learning? And they would also like to know who will determine. Thank you. Sir, Sir Jero, sir. Okay. Um, uh, actually, isa pa yan sa issue na pinag-uusapan ngayon, ano? kung sino ba ang office ang mag-survey uh, for those students who will avail of the online and the offline module. Ano? So, pinag-uusapan pa, wala pa rin po until now, uh, tell you the truth, wala pa po tayong decision dyan who will do the survey. But, ang pwede ko lang po masabi sa inyo ay meron po yan. Hindi po ang teacher ang magsasurvey. Why? Kasi po, uh, pag tayo po yung magsasurvey, uh, um, may ipit yung distribution ng module. So, dapat po kasi ma-identify natin ang students who will be under the uh, online and the offline so that we can distribute the module on the scheduled time. All right. Thank you, Sir Jerome. Salamat po. So, we have another question. This time, the question is from Sir Artin Umali. Students are asking if there, if there is a possibility that they can ship learning platforms such as during the midterm, he or she is on HBL, then she wanted uh, in the finals to do online learning. Anyone from the speakers? Yeah. Uh, sir yes. Pete? Um, yes, I, will, I will answer. Oh, no man. Um, in the event na magkaroon ng mga unexpected um, na pangyayari, um, an online um, learner can shift into printed module modality. Yes, the answer is yes. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am Beng? Uh, opo, uh, that was discussed last night when we had a meeting po. Uh, ang sabi po, at least man lang, ang, 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 ang napag-usapan namin ay kung mag-shift po ang student, at least po matapos man lang yung isang term. Uh, this was the suggestion of Sir Paul na hanggang midterm period tapusin mo and it will be the final term if you would be shifting. Pero as much as possible, we are not into that uh, uh May mga policies po siguro or rules tayo which will govern the shifting of the student. Hindi yung dahil gusto lang niya na lumipat from home-based to uh, online. So, kailangan po ma-determine muna yun. And it will not be an easy process for any student that, ah, I don't want to go online now. Gusto ko na mas masarap pala pag naka-printed module. Or, from, ay, ayoko na pala dito. Gusto ko na pala. It should not be that. So, mayroon pong proseso na pagdadaanan ang bata. And it will not be just their decision. Yeah. Yan po. 
Very well. Thank you, ma'am. Um, okay, we have another question. Uh, this is also in relation to... Our next question is from Rizalyn Dumas. Ma'am, sir, is it possible for a student to have online learning and modules at the same time? So they're, they're asking if the students will have it both. Pwede daw po ba yun? Um, the answer is no. Yes. <laughs> okay. They can. All right. So it is clear the students should only choose one. It's either HBN or online learning. So clear po tayo doon. Thank you. Okay. A question from Dr. George Francisco. Hi, Ma'am Beng. This is addressed to Ma'am Beng. Hi, Ma'am Beng. Ang aklat na aming ginagamit sa diskurso sa Pilipino ay idinisenyo na namin na module format nung isang taon pa. Taglay nito ang mga pangunahing bahagi gaya ng sumusunod. Topic, objectives, lesson, proper individual task, and group task. Could we just migrate it into an online version? This would help us facilitate seamless teaching. Maraming salamat. Ma'am Beng? Sinagot ko na po, sinagot ko na po yan doon sa chat uh, kanina okay. while I was listening. Sinagot ko. Pero sige po, sasagutin ko pa din po dito. Sabi ko nga po, congratulations po sa kanilang grupo dahil hindi po magiging mahira para sa kanila ang bumuo ng mga modules. Ang sabi ko lang po, basta lang po ang tamang pagkilala doon sa mga sumulat ng modules ay mailagay ng tama. At basta lamang po yung copyright at yung pagpapaalam sa mga sumulat nito ay nagawa ng tama. Siguro naman po ay uh, basta po sundin kung ano yung mga nasa polisiya ng ating copyright guide. So wala akong magiging problema at congratulations sa kanila kasi hindi po sila mahihirapan. Sana all. <laughs> <laughs> Tama po. Thank you, Ma'am Beng. Um, another question, do we, do we have the freedom to design the layout of our module as long as it meets the required content? I, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, layout po, uh, layout and design naman po. Parang yes. freedom naman po ng faculty. So, yun po. Opo, oh, oh, oh pwede. Uh, Sir Jerome, would you like to say something po in addition? Uh, actually, yun din ang sasabihin ko. Okay. Basta ang kailangan na po ma-meet natin yung sections ng module. Meron pong minimum requirements. Di ba, Ma'am Beng? So, pag na-meet naman po yun, okay. with regards to the format, to the design, uh, actually, pwede nga po yan mag-usap ang buong department na mag-come up lang sila sa isang format. Eh. So, pwede po yun. Okay. So, it is allowed. Okay. Now, question from Sir Michael Guyamin. Can the student ship? Uh, actually, ito na po yung ano, tanong kanina pala. So, they are allowed. No po? But it has to undergo a certain uh, like a procedure. Hindi basta-bastang pwedeng mag-ship. Okay. Yes. Now, moving on, we have a question from... Ms. May Yulohio. Hello, Ma'am May. Um, this question is addressed to Ms. Obo. Ma'am Beng, um, based on the sample module that you presented, may we know if the committee suggests essential components of a module as well as optional components? I appreciate what Dr. George Francisco shared among the, the comments, but are those the standards, components that we, are, we were expected to come up with? To Ma'am Beng, please. Opo, nasagot na din po namin kanina, sir. Sinagot ko din po yan doon sa chat. Ang sabi ko po, uh, meron po tayo na nakalagay doon sa syllabus guide, yung minimum requirements, which was mentioned by uh, Sir Jerome Mopalago. Basta po, yung point twelve point two ng syllabus IRR tells us of the requirements that we need to put in the modules. Kasi po, we cannot really tell what are the essential, what are the important. Basta po, the four components must be there. It totally depends upon the different disciplines of each department kung paano po nila imamodify yung kanilang modules. Because when we check, yun pong guide on how uh, it will be checked, how the modules will be checked, ang mahalaga lang po, we will be able to see the important components na nakalagay sa guide natin at nakalagay sa IRR. So, bahala na pong mag-modify ang mga departments, what other parts of the modules will they be putting in? At tanggap po yun, basta nag-agree po sila. Alright, that is very clear. Salamat po, Ma'am Beng. Um, let us have the next question. Suppose we have videos or some online resources that are needed in our modules. How are we going to incorporate them in the printed module? Opo. 
Ayun, yun po yung sinasagot ko kanina bago po natapos yung pagsalita uh, ni Sir Ames. Yun po yung sinasabi ko kanina na at least po meron po tayong leeway and it was discussed last night in our meeting po uh, na nasabi po namin na talagang hindi mo siya pwede. Alam po natin na paano po natin ilalagay yung video doon sa printed. Talagang hindi po natin siya magagawang ilagay. Kahit po yung video ko na sinare ko, hindi ko din po siya kayang ilagay sa printed. But how am I going to do that? Doon po sa sample ko ng printed, ginawa ko na it's a talking module. It's the same way as I am talking. Ngayon ang tanong, paano po kung kailangan may embed na video coming from outside? Mahira po talaga. Hindi po talaga siya kayang ilagay sa printed. Alam po natin na hindi siya pwedeng ilagay. Yun po yung magiging advantage of the students who would be opting for online. Kasi ang printed po, hindi talaga natin kayang gawin wa inyon. Ah uh, siguro po nasa bata na lang 'yon if if the hmm. impossible naman ko libawa magkaklase, ma-share sa kanya pero kung printed po hindi po talaga natin kayang i-translate ang mood uh, ang, ang videos na pwede natin ilagay doon. Ah uh, mahirap po talaga doon. Alam po natin na talagang hindi po siya kaya nga po magkakaroon ng modification, slight modification yung nandoon sa online at yung nandoon sa printed. Okay, in, in addition Yes, sir. Uh, uh, kaya nga po dapat unahin ang printed module, mm -hmm. no? Para hindi po tayo mamroblema kung ano yung pwede nating ilagay sa online. Why? Because most likely yung kung ano yung meron sa printed module, ang expectation natin that the printed module can deliver kung ano yung mga learning objectives and learning outcomes na gusto natin based on the syllabus. So, ang advantage ng bata of using the online, yun yung pinaka perks niya na of course we can embed some videos, we can uh, include some references online na wala talaga sa printed. Kaya mas inuuna po natin yung printed para we can make sure na yung printed talaga matututo yung bata. What more kung i-upload natin siya sa online that we can uh, add an other uh, sources no? where in the, uh, these, these sources can aid the students to learn more. Po. Thank you, Sir Jerome. Salamat po. Anyone, any, Sir Paul, would you like to um, add any additional? I think that also addressed the, some of the questions pertaining to alin dapat pang mauna, kung printed or online. Thank you, Sir Jerome, for giving uh, your uh, explanation. Yes, uh, yes sir. Um, okay. to, uh, to add to what uh, Ma'am Beng and Sir Jerome has said po, uh, yun po, uh, example po ha, kaya po dun sa syllabus, may part po dun ng pang-printed module, tsaka meron pong pang-online module, kasi you can see, may mga learning activities and assessments na exactly pwede, meron pong hindi. Kaya po dun sa planning stage, it will reflect. For example, halimbawa po, ako meron po sa module na kailangan ng map. So, pag-printed module po, may, may export po ako na printed map na kasama po sa module. Pag online po, interactive map online ang gagawin nila. But it's, it must be the same. So, gan ganun po. Pag sa, S, pag sa assessment naman po, ay, alimbawa online, may flip grid sila, they can talk. But they cannot do that in printed module. So, essay po yung magiging katumbas. So, ganun po yung uh, uh, sa planning process po ng syllabus, it will reflect. So, make sure po, basta ang common po, pwede pong maiba ang modality or, or ang, ang delivery po nung, nung assessment. But make sure yung le learning outcomes, uh, ma-address pa rin po at ma mahihit dun sa assessments. Yun po. Thank you, Sir Paul. Now, uh, let's move to another question. Ito naman po galing kay uh, Miss Catherine Salban. Does the online module have to be packaged with video? Can we do video conferencing with a multimedia mix for each classes? Ah, uh, okay. Sir Paul. Ang understanding ko po doon, I'm not sure if I'm correct. Um, may synchronous classes, which is limited to 4.5 hours for a three-unit lecture class. Per term, it's three hours. So, ang ito pong video na ito, na like yung pinakita po ni Ma'am Beng, uh, a while ago, it's part of the asynchronous. Pwede naman po. Every, kung gusto nyo pong every meeting, may naproduce po kayong uh, video for asynchronous uh, session. There's no problem. Medyo mas mahirap lang po ang, ang pag-produce nun kasi uh, you have to produce the presentation proper and then you have to record your video as well. But that's, act that's actually good. Yan po. Thank you, Sir Paul. Um, another question from Sir Michael Del Rosario. He would like to clarify if the modules that we need to prepare or submit should be for the entire term 
like for example for midterm, or only enough for the first three weeks of classes? Uh, ah, sir. Yes. I replied to that po, nireply ko na kanina. Ang sabi po namin doon sa IRR, ang nakalagay po doon, uh, at least you should be you should be able to prepare until the midterm period. Yung uh, yung final term po, yung mga modules outline lang with complete references. That's stipulated in the syllabus IRR. Pero kagabi po when we had a meeting, sabi po namin, it's not easy to come up with modules. Mag kahit po sino siguro ang faculty mararamdaman yung stress na pinagdaanan namin ni Mr. Paul nung ginagawa namin yung modules. Kasi Nilina po, it's not easy. It will not be an hour or two making it. So kaya po, sabi namin, at least kung hihingi po yung faculty ng hindi kakayanin, at least po yung first three weeks na modules, you should be able to prepare for that. And then while these three weeks are going on, doon po tinatapos yung ibang modules. Ganoon na lang po, so that it will be a clear system also for faculty and module designers. Yan po. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Beng. Um, we have a, a question here. I don't know if it is already addressed. For example, I have four modules during the midterm and I want to have synchronous class each time I will introduce the lesson or module. Is it possible for me to give four schedule with 1.5 hours for the total of six hours for synchronous instead of 4.5 hours that you suggested? Hindi po, ayun. We have, ayun po. Sige, Sir Jerome. Sige po. Sir Jerome. Uh, we have a guide. Meron na po tayong guidelines. So, I think we have to strictly follow what is in the guideline. Now, remember po ha, ang ina-upload po natin sa online module pa rin, parang bonus na lang po sa estudyante na meron po tayong synchronous na, na pag-aaral. So, imagine niyo po yung nasa printed module. De, de, uh, wala po talaga silang paraan masyado na makapag-attend yan. So, uh, I, I, we have to value the 4.5 hours. Okay, thank you, Sir Jerome. So it is clear. Um, we have a question from Ma'am Olive Legaspi. Hello po, Ma'am Olive. Um, I am not sure if it is already answered uh, in our um, uh, live chat, but for the benefit of those who would like to hear the answer, ang question niya po ay, based on what Ms. Beng and Paul said that during self-care me time, the students can opt to do uh, absolutely nothing. Why do we have to include this in our modules? Opo, sagutin ko po, hello Ma'am Olive. Uh, number one po, we still have to put it in our, in the modules that we're preparing because it's stipulated in the syllabus. Nasa syllabus po yun and it is, under the IRR. Meron po tayong IRR separated for self-care. Pangalawang sagot ko po doon, uh, if we have like 20 students in class, mm -hmm. hindi naman po guarantee na lahat ng 20 students na yon would not make use of any of the self-care. Kasi malamang po, meron doon na gamit, merong isa o dalawa na maari na mag-me time lang talaga sila to do whatever they want to do. But at least po, we are sure as faculty that our students are still sane uh, doing something for that. So, ang sa akin po, kung ako, uh, hindi po kasi garanti na isang buong klase, wala silang i-avail doon sa self-care me time na meron. And we have IRR for self-care me time po. So, yun lang po. <laughs> Sir Paul, you might want to add something. Uh, same din po ma'am, ano po, uh, yun po, uh, kasi actually yan din po yung unang question ko, kasi nung unang ginawa ko po yung sample module, wala pong self-care me time, pero yun nga, paano natin siya palalabasin na, na midway or at the start or at the end, uh, may allotted time sila, kumbaga yung buong 54 hours is not exclusively devoted for the learning and assessments, so uh, para ma-ensure din po na may na-allot na time sa self-care. Tsaka yun, pag pwede rin po sa printed module na kamustahin sila, kasi sa online module po, ilalagay din natin siya eh, yung self-care na, 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 na part. So, para po may, may parallelism between online and printed module, indicate na lang po doon kahit po majority ay mag-o-op ng uh, walang gagawin. <laughs> Ayun po. Thank you, Sir Paul. Thank you, Ma'am Beng. So, let's have a few more questions. This one is about... Um, they're asking about the same subject but separated class of lecture and lab. Can we develop one module for that? Uh, ang question ko po doon is uh, separate ba yung grading? Uh, 
Yun po. Uh, depende po kasi may mode po kasi na similar ang ang uh, uh, na, na as one po siya ginigrade. Pag separate po ang grading, uh, eh, hindi ako makapag-commit mong Ben. <laughs> ano po nga na yun? Ako din po. For We understand po. Actually, so wrong, yes. kasi medyo Opo, Actually, yan y- 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 yung isa sa issue na nahihirapan din ang committee. Inaamin ko na yan. No? Uh, how can we come up with a module ng isang lab? Kalimbawa po, offline. Eh paano, kunyari po, chemistry. Saan po siya kukuha ng gamit? Hindi naman po siya pwedeng pumunta, dadali niya sa bahay yung gamit. So isa, isa po to sa issue na talaga pinag-iisipan hanggang ngayon ay hindi pa po kami makapag-isip kung paano ang gagawin sa module ng lab. Pero sa mga computer laboratory po, no, I think kaya, kayang gumawa naman. Kung may mga laboratory manual na po sila, pwede naman sigurong i-convert nila into module yun. Yung sa computer lab po, uh, particularly uh, handling siguro sa computer science department, sa IT, or sa ibang colleges na nag-offer ng computer subjects, pwede sigurong gumawa ng module yun sa lab kasi nasa bahay naman sila. Ang magiging problema na po natin dito, yun nga pong printed uh, module. Kasi nga po wala silang means. Possible, wala silang computer. No? So, kunyari po, uh, bio ang course, tapos meron siya computer, computer <coughs> one. Kunyari, the use of Microsoft Office. Eh kung wala nga po yung bata, pinili si... Uh, offline kasi wala siyang computer. Di ba, Sir Pete? So, paano niya po pasasagutan yung laboratory? So, ito pa po yung pinag-uusapan sa ngayon. Uh, uh, alam ko, k- kailangan talaga ito pag-usapan. Eh. So, honesty, wala pa po talaga kami naiisip na solution dyan. I would like to be uh, honest on this uh, issue. Yun po. Thank you po. Thank you, Sir. Um, I, th- I think we have more questions but we have limited time no po um is there anything else you would like to say before we finally come to the end of the program to all, to our speakers um isa isa siguro si sir paul okay uh, po, ah sige ako na mauna ayun po ah uh, yung questions po uh, we take time to answer the q and a Uh, pinagmimitingan po, yung mga nap- hindi po nasasagutan, uh, medyo may delay lang po, pero marireceive po ninyo yung sagot sa mga hindi po na, na answer na, na question. Ayun po. Tapos, um, dun po sa uh, learning path level 5, may mga essay assessment po doon na hindi naman po required sagutan. But if you want to comment on the specific IRRs, it's there. And again, you can email IRR hotline po. Yun po. Yun lamang po. And thank you very much po. Uh, ako naman po, uh, uh, please, if you have some comments and suggestions with the IRR that we have constructed, so uh, still, ito po ay draft, nasa draft, uh, 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 pa lang po ito, draft na lang po ito, so pwede pa po itong mabago. Uh, please, please feel free to comment and you can send your comments and suggestions to the IRR hotline. Uh, Ano nga ba email noon, Sir Pete? Nakalimutan ko. Ayun. So, sundan ko lang yung sinabi nung dalawa. So, lahat po ito ay work in progress. If you have comments and suggestions, you can email it to the uh, IRR care hotline at the lsud.edu.ph. Okay? So, importante po ang inputs ng nating lahat, ninyo, lalo na po ng mga faculty. So, thank you po for um, today. So, ako po, I just would like to thank you for all the, the suggestions, for all the comments that you keep on giving. Uh, kung may maitutulong po kami, ako, pwede nyo po akong i-message. I will try to reply to you. At saka doon po sa magsisimula na mag-develop ng kanilang syllabus and modules, I, we, we fully understand how difficult it is, pero naniniwala po kaming lahat na lahat po kakayanin natin. Kasi una po sa lahat, wala naman po tayong pagpipilian. At ikalawa po, uh, alam ko po at naniniwala po kaming lahat that St. John Baptist is that Asa will always be with us to guide all of us in order for us to emerge victorious in this particular journey. Have a nice day, Paul. Thank you, Ma'am Beng. Um, Sir Ames? Uh, yes, no, I, again, I also 
thank uh, thank you all for for listening and we uh, in behalf also of my fellow speakers no uh, it's a work in progress and if you want a direct answer you can also instead of the secretary you can email me at jrosina at the lsud that uh, and we will be ready to to hear you know if you have other concerns uh, regarding copyright thank you Okay, thank you, Sir uh, Aim, Sir Pete, Mambeng, Sir Paul, Sir Jerome. Maraming salamat po. And to all who participated in our Q&A portion, maraming salamat po. We shall now proceed to the presentation of the Certificate of Appreciation to our speakers. De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Pete Menjola, Dr. Evelyn Ovo, Mr. Paul Anthony Notorio, Mr. Jerome Buhay, and Dr. Jose Ames Rosina. For being the resource speakers in the online faculty engagement activity entitled Printed Modules, Policies, Planning, and Preparation, given this 22nd day of July 2020, signed by Engineer Jose Rizaldi de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology, and Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. Dr. Paterno Alcartado, Dean College of Education, and Co-Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. And Dr. Marco Saez, Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research. Once again, thank you very much to all our speakers at this point in behalf of the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee, we would like to extend our heartfelt appreciation to all the administrators and faculty members for joining us this morning. I'd also like to thank ICTC, CILP, Human Resource Management Office, Hermina Torres Quality Assurance Office, and our Faculty Association for making this learning session possible. To the producers of this live event for handling the program and to, the, to other preparations, thank you so much. We'd also like to thank the other members of our faculty training and engagement committee from the seven colleges and affiliated offices headed by Sir Saldi de Armas, Dr. Pat Alcartado, through the guidance of Dr. Marco Saez. Maraming salamat po. Before we finally come to the end of the program, here are some important announcements and reminders. Again, uh, please mark your calendar for our upcoming online learning engagement. Please block all the remaining Wednesday for the month of July and August. And on September 2, the time is 10 a.m., we'll be posting announcements and web access link prior to each scheduled online engagement. On July 29, we have another session. On August 5, 12, and 19, 26, we have another session. And on September 2, to receive certificates, kindly go to Schoolbook. Go to Courses, Enroll, Input Access Code. The access code for college and GS is BRNZ-MFSC. For high school, the access code is OFHD-YOMI. Answer the webinar survey evaluation, which is good for 24 hours. And the certificates will be automatically awarded. And uh, I think that ends our fourth online faculty engagement. Again, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We hope to see you all next session. As the Salian educators, amidst the challenges, let us continuously strive. Let us care for what matters. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. Okay. Animal Asal.